there. Welcome everyone to Cisco Canada's virtual kitchen. If you don't know what pelevating is, chef, this chef will tell you. What? What? <laughs> Putting me on the spot. <laughs> I did not make that slide, everybody. That is a Jay special. Okay, Jay. No, please. no. Enlighten us. <laughs> so you said. <laughs> Thank you for the system that built that slide for me today. Pelevating. I think it's plant-based and pelevating together. You know what? We can make it whatever we want. And maybe you just anything. like tagged a new term. It's going to be in the Oxford <gasps> Dictionary. I will nominate it next year oh as God. the new term, Jay. Thank you. Pelevating. Pelevating plant-based. So that's why I'm here today. <laughs> Chef Kylo from Unilever Food Solutions here with my lovely friend Jay to elevate all of your plant needs. <laughs> you know what? I, I think we just, I actually, let's. January let's... thing going right into February <laughs> and keep making up different words that sound ridiculous. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> I think we charted a new trend. I think, I think we have to. But you know what else we're going to do? We're going to also do hybrids of other things today, Jay. So it actually works out really well. Uh, with making up our new words. So what we're really all focused on right now as restaurant operators and chefs, of course, is oh, inflation, these costs are insane. You can't eat at home, you can't eat out. Um, but what we're gonna hope to do is really entice diners to come into your operation and dine and really see that value while you can still hopefully maintain lower costs. And what are we gonna do that with? Elevating plant-based foods. And by plant-based, I don't mean plant-based alternative meats or analogs. Everything today is going to be with full-on veggies. Um, I will do that focus between that weird world of plant-based, plant-forward. So we will have some animal-based products in here. But we're going to keep it really, really small in quantity um, and just show some different tips and tricks. How does that sound, Jay? It sounds pelivating. <laughs> so should i go right into it or are we gonna we're gonna right we're going to break we'll come okay back. perfect I, even, I, I love the fact that it's huge on, in my studio right now on, on this big screen <laughs> you'll be forever down. reminded i will definitely elevate this commercial right now we'll be right back cisco classic high performance nitrile gloves Cisco Classic High Performance Nitrile Gloves are great for back of the house tasks such as chopping and slicing, working around moderate heat, or customer facing operations. They offer an elegant look and superior protection for any culinary application where touch dexterity, cut protection, and presentation are key. Cisco Classic High Performance Nitrile Gloves have superb tensile strength plus a flexible form fitting design. They are an ideal barrier protection when working around moderate heat, oil, and chemicals. They can be used for cleaning and sanitizing in the front or back of the house. They're available in black and cobalt blue for any HACCP programs. They are great for detail-oriented tasks and are compliant with all FDA regulations for safe food contact. Nitrile gloves offer the right protection for the wearer when performing precision tasks that require long wear and a fitted grip. Cisco Classic High Performance Nitro Gloves are available for order today. See your local Cisco representative for more information. All right, we're back pelevating this next part. Well, I was going to say, speaking of trends and being trend starter, I don't know if you've seen all the high end fashion lately, but I feel like those gloves will fit right in. <laughs> There's some weird it's stuff a, happening. You know what? It's a new trend that we're looking for is just fashion, not even food service. Just get into fashion. It's fashion. And wear your, so, wear your black rubber gloves. We do have some lovely food that looks uh, very fashionable and high end today. Um, so what I wanted to do is make sure that we focus on some of the more trending items outside of plant-based at this moment, right? So yes, that'll be kind of the core of it is that we're going to have veggie based items, but also what else are we seeing that's really drawing in customers? Um, we've decided on this first dish to really hone in on Japanese cuisine. So this will be um, really influenced by a lot of the ingredients that you typically see in Japanese culture, which are very readily available here. On top of that, the idea that there's a lot of grains, root vegetables, things that tend to be less expensive. 
The reason that we are talking about plants is you already know this. We're already seeing beef, pork, and chicken prices rising at a ridiculous rate, um, including eggs. Um, so we're really honing in on how can we really craft these vegetables in a very particular way that seems very enticing, feels like it's got a lot of value to it, um, is exciting flavor palette. Um, so what we're doing here is working with those basics and then working with some really easy cost cutting uh, products that we have under the Norrin Hellman's brand name. So this Japanese charcuterie board, which is what I'm doing. So again, something else that's become very trendy as we've come out of the pandemic and people are starting to go out and dine in groups again, lots of sharing. It really becomes a source of that entertainment. Let's do that little bit of a twist on it. So I'm going to do three different dips here and also talk to you about the arrangement that I've already set up on this board here. So the first one is our edamame hummus. So again, hummus, as you would imagine, just as with chickpeas, it's going to be made in a very similar way uh, using frozen edamame. So either shelled um, already, although of course they're easy enough to just shell on their own with some slight blanching to it. Also, if you have ones in the pod that you want for other means or if you want to use them to decorate the board. Uh, so I'm going to show it to you just the mise en place because I didn't want it to be super loud with the blender in here. So you'll have to just mind that. So this is our pureed edamame beans. Um, then we have our hey, Chef. Yes. So I'm not going to try to even say that word today because it's just my, my lips ain't working with my brain. Edamame? Yes. Now, did you take them out of the shells and stuff? or you just So you can actually purchase them, and I'm sure that Cisco will sell these as well, but you can buy them frozen, already shelled. Is it an okay. option? Yes. But if not, they're very, very easy to just kind of pinch out of the pod. Um, and again, if you buy them in the pod, like I just said, it kind of gives you multi-use if you want to have them kind of as a snack, you know, with some Malden salt kind of um, sprinkled on top, that can become part of your board as well. Um, so we have those edamame um, beans already done. We have a sesame paste, so very similar uh, to tahini that we see in Middle Eastern cooking. Um, in Japanese cuisine, sesame paste is also used quite a bit. Um, when we're looking at different types of like wafu dressing, for instance, that's typically what goes into it. Um, again, because sesame seeds are very, very common, so it has that really nice toasty note to it. Gonna add some, it's just a, a little clove I have there because I'm gonna use it for something else after, but uh, some roasted garlic as well. And then some fresh herbs. So I have some cilantro and I actually threw in a little bit of basil as well. I wanted that bright floral note to kind of bring it all together. And a little bit of lemon juice is gonna be in there. So after you're done pureeing that, I've added in some of the Hellman's vegan mayonnaise. So again, this is made with Canadian canola oil, just like you expect from all the other Hellman's mayonnaise. Uh, but of course, with no egg in there, it's just starches that help really give it that nice creaminess, that consistency that you're looking for. The benefit to adding a mayonnaise to either something like this or even a guacamole is it will help with that shelf life um, by keeping that vibrant green color for a little bit longer than you would expect if you did not add that product. It also adds a really nice creaminess to it as well. So at the end of the day, mm. this is what your edamame hummus looks like. And it also just sounds nice, right? Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a hybrid with that hummus in there. No, I've never seen that, Chef. I've never seen that. That's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple places that, I, that I've that i seen that have had it around, um, but I was really thinking about what can you buy fruits and vegetables that are frozen or canned, okay. and I think dips are a perfect place for that, right? Oh, you, so, fuck, you're so, sorry. <laughs> I mean, frick, that it's, it, that's a brilliant idea. No, I'm serious. Right, that because it's also brilliant. a place where you don't really notice the end texture. It's not as though you're just... Yeah. You know, yeah, eating that vegetable straight up and expecting more of a bite to it. It's a place where we can start then cutting costs. Um, that being said, too, uh, just one of the items that we have here on our charcuterie board, speaking of things that hold well and are good um, just to make into, I mean, croquettes, really, you can put anything in there. So mm -hmm. this one that I made um, has kabucha squash. So that is a Japanese type of squash. It kind of has like an interior, exterior skin that kind of looks like an acorn squash, um, but it's much sweeter. It's actually even sweeter than a butternut squash. Serious? 
find a kombucha squash, that's fine too. Any squash will work for this. You'll notice that it has a ready color to it. I had some beets and I thought, why not? Why not add some beets in there? So if we're thinking about other places where we might have some leftover or different types of root vegetables that we can change seasonally or depending on what we get in there, this was so incredibly easy to make. It was just roasted whole squash. Well, the squash was cut slightly, but roasted whole beets. Then you mash everything together, add a little bit of salt and pepper, and I coated it with uh, panko breadcrumbs and toasted sesame seeds. So again, kind of going back to that feeling of that kind of Japanese inspired by bringing the sesame seeds back in there as well on top of having the kombucha squash. So that'd be a lovely thing for charcuterie platter. I know it's a little bit more put together where we typically see a charcuterie board as being just straight up as is. Um, but this really, I think, shows that value added to it as well. So the next- Chef, I, Chef, I have a question for you. Yeah? Because I'm blown away, first of all. You're always blown away. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was easy. <laughs> well, I just, I, it, it doesn't take much. But so do you find, that more, more chefs or more restaurateurs and stuff like that, if they look more into these ethnic diverse dishes and foods, you're going to see a lot of opportunity to maybe cut some costs or look at very inexpensive dishes and stuff. Absolutely. I mean, you think about anything that somebody doesn't want to do at home and that's what they're going to go out for, which is always where we sell fried foods being at the top of anybody's list because nobody wants to do it at home. The same thing can go with a lot of globally inspired foods. Um, not everyone is like me and is obsessed with any type of Asian cuisine and has the whole gamut of vinegars and sauces, et cetera, et cetera, in their pantry. So to be able to do this with just a few key ingredients even will be so easy for a restaurateur, but I think is really driving those flavor trends and the demand that we're seeing. Really? Yes, I think so. I think, um, I think it's cool, though. I think it's so cool. I think it's. Well, I just, I've, I've done Japanese food on here before. You know how I feel. Yes, about. yeah, I know. <laughs> but, I, but I just love the fact that it, it really creates more options. We, act, in a way, it forces us to maybe look a little bit further than what we're what we're normally looking at when it comes. But to it doesn't stuff. have to be overwhelming to start thinking about putting these items on a menu. Um, because like you've seen so far, it could be a lot of items you already have in house or something that you can bring in frozen. If you decide to do it, you know, every once in a while, it'll hold a little bit more. I know we don't have all the freezer space in our kitchens. Um, but there's definitely room to play with some very common ingredients that most restaurants already have on hand. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to show you another sauce that I'm going to make for the charcuterie board. So this one's a dip. This one's more of a... A sauce. Uh, so again, using our Hellman's vegan mayo. And what I love about this is it does actually have some really great flavor to it. You, and I say actually really, uh, because I would think most people would not associate that with a vegan mayo, that it would be kind of chalky or bland. But this really does have that creaminess that you've grown to expect with the Hellman's real mayonnaise is the same with the vegan. And of course, this is gluten free as well. And one of the things that I love about having an offering like this is having the option of advertising it as, you know, gluten-free and vegan or gluten-free and vegetarian if you want, but you also don't have to. So this product could really do multi-purpose across your kitchen for a variety of different options that aren't even necessarily plant-based, plant-forward, vegetarian, or vegan. <laughs> no problem. Uh, well, oh, geez, Jay's gonna take over. Well, so, I, was just, I was just like, the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> we have our Hellman's vegan on here. Um, then I just have some wasabi powder. You could use wasabi paste. Wasabi powder, I think, is just as good. So again, do you wasabi use wasabi powder just like you use the paste minus the water? Um, well, typically, I think we see wasabi paste being used just as kind of like a side condiment when you're having your sushi, okay. right? I find the powder to be more versatile, which is actually some. This is just what I already had at home. Oh, um, okay just because of that dry format to it. Uh, what I love about this too, is I feel like it's a little bit easier to kind of moderate the amount that I'm using. So as we know, wasabi is a Japanese horseradish. 
Um, the green color is not natural. Uh, that's always added after the fact. It's actually a, a large, like, uh, it's white on the inside, root vegetable. Um, but again, this is what people most commonly associate it with. So I'm just blending up the wasabi powder and the vegan mayo. I'm gonna add a little bit of, a little bit, because we know a little bit goes a long way, of sesame oil. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of, well, this is tamari, but soy sauce. Mm. And I'm gonna do actually low sodium, um, just because I'm already gonna have a little bit of sodium within that vegan mayo, and I don't want it to be too salty, especially if we're looking to dip something into it. Nice. So this has all the flavors in it. You could slighten it sweetly, sweetly, <laughs> slightly, with um, a little bit of honey or maple syrup. And I'm going to pair this with our croquettes. I have another spot still left over. So we have our delicious wasabi vegan dip. Of course, could go way beyond charcuterie platter if we wanted to do some sort of sandwich or a wrap or even turn it into a salad dressing, loosening it a little bit with water, which is one of the most amazing things that I think mayonnaise can do is that just adding water, of course it also helps with your costs, but you can thin it out that way and have your premium yeah. things and just add a few different ingredients. Just water. Just water. Why not? No more, because no more oil is needed. We've already had oil in the product. Okay. So I'm going to do my second dip and I'm actually pairing that and I will move this over so you can see. Um, I have got some tempura here. So traditionally what you'll see with some tempura batter when you're making it yourself, not out of the box, uh, is that there's actually egg in the product. We have omitted that here and done, I've done actually some gluten-free flour blend, but of course just AP flour, uh, cornstarch, I did some dry active yeast and some water and that was it. And that you get really lovely consistency that you get from a traditional batter except vegan. So I have done some heirloom carrots here. I've got some uh, eggplant and I've got some green beans as well. So what I'm going to do here is um, a miso aioli. So again, I'm using the term aioli very loosely. And I'm going to start with, you guessed it, the rest of my Hellman's vegan mayo. And then this is where my little clove of roasted garlic came up. I'll move this so that you can see more. So again, you would just throw this all either into a, a blender or uh, into a cambro with um, an immersion blender would be a super easy way to do it. You could hold it for up to three days or you can make smaller quantities, of course. Um, so that was my roasted garlic that went in. So this is my white miso paste. Um, it really doesn't make that much of a difference other than the visual I find in this application for what type, whether you want to use red or white. Miso, again, be careful of how much you're adding because of course the miso adds a lot of salt to it. So that's the only thing that we want to be mindful of. And you can see I'm measuring very accurately here. <laughs> Um, and then we've got to add our lemon and you can see I'm cooking at home and I'm not wearing those fancy gloves. You know what, if you want to, if you want a nice pair, I can hook you up. Oh, you know where I can get some? That'd be I've, great. You know what? I've got, I've got people. <laughs> so now that I've got all my ingredients in here, oh, this loves, it smells so good between Having that roasted garlic and the lemon in there, the miso just kind of adds that extra dimension of getting a little bit of that nuttiness in there, which is nice. And that's going to go right in beside our tempura because our fried veggies need more creaminess and goodness. So those are our three dips that we did with Hellman's Vegan Mayo. Oh, lost a croquette here. So the rest of the stuff that we have on this platter is some um, pickled cucumber. So again, pickled Japanese vegetables. You could either use daikon or carrot. I already had cucumber here with some toasted sesame seeds on top. And then of course, some um, charred shishito peppers, um, or some people might know them as padron peppers. Those are very similar, Spanish or Japanese version. 
Uh, they're not particularly si spicy, so you can just eat them as is. And of course, would be lovely with either the wasabi dip um, or our miso aioli. And this is our plant-based Japanese charcuterie board, which now just looks like it needs a lovely glass of wine. Exactly. <laughs> or, tea, or tea, or tea, a nice green tea. Yeah. Or tea, right, yes. Um, so that's it for our, our charcuterie board. So I'm going to show you one more recipe, but right after our commercial. There we go. Let's make sure I hit the right button. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. In any kitchen, true flavor matters most. It's about bringing real ingredients forward. It's about delivering consistent flavor. It's about being true to your taste. Your professional faces start with real ingredients balanced to perfection. Adding a layer of depth and richness to every dish you serve. All it takes is one taste compared to the competition to understand the difference true flavor forward faces can make. That means you can trust every dish you brace, glaze, sear, and finish is truly yours. Only Nor Professional Bases deliver true flavor you can taste. Taste for yourself. Request your free sample today. Well, hey, that looks like a pretty cool product, Jay. I was going to say that looks, I've used that product. <laughs> oh, wait, I just happen to have some here. Um, so I, have a question for you, I have a question for you. Before yeah, you get started. I'm going to interrupt. Can you overuse that product? Can you overuse it? Yeah. In, like in what sense do you mean? Like adding too much? Yeah. Yeah, so with anything, because of course it also has seasoning and it's concentrated, so it would just end up being too salty. The beautiful thing, though, I find about this product, besides the fact that it is shelf stable, even after you've opened, opened it for up to a year from production date, we have veggie, beef, chicken, and uh, seafood, which is lobster and shrimp. Uh, I just wanted to add that in there is also the fact that you can use it in multiple ways. So today I'm actually using it diluted as a stock, uh, but you can also use it in its concentrated form. So if you want to really enhance some sauteed vegetables that you have, yeah. or if you are making sauces back of house and you feel like it's a little bit weak, you can absolutely add some of this to it to really enhance it, uh, to fix up that little boo-boo. Um, so it really does have that multi-versatility to it. Um, but again, like anything else, because there is seasoning in it, um, you could, you could over-salt. So again, that's always my warning whenever using a convenience product, is thinking about sodium levels mm -hmm. um, with the natural ingredients that you have going on in your dish. Does that happen? So, yeah, because that, that happened to me is what I'm trying to get to. Oh, yeah. So, so what we recommend is 30 milliliters of this product for one liter of water diluted to create a stock. Um, and that stock in itself comes in around 600 milligrams of sodium per one cup serving um, or less on this one, I think is like 480. Um, so they're not considered low sodium, but yes, following the directions on the back of the pack for quantities does help. Now, <laughs> can you, can you, so if you make it into a sauce, can you freeze it and then use uh, it later? Absolutely. Freeze sauce, stable, once diluted into a stock. Um, same thing with this other product that I'm going to be using, which I know that you've seen plenty of times before, but our Nor Culinary Cream, which mimics a bechamel sauce. Once that has been prepared, it's also free sauce stable. Same with our gravies, our hollandaise sauce. So we've really put the test to a lot of the Nor products to ensure that they can handle the abuse um, nice. to make sure that you're getting the most out of your product. Wow. Yeah. I know more than you ever wanted to know about bases. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. But thank you for asking the question today. 
I have another one, but we'll wait till later. Okay. Um, yes, leave us leave us in suspense. Is the next dish that we have is going to be a pasta dish, um, but we are doing plant based pasta, and by that <clears throat> I mean moving away from traditional whole wheat. Um, and I have a pasta here that is a spaghetti that's a mixture of. Uh, quinoa, so we still have a grain and some cauliflower. And again, we are seeing tons of different types of pasta out there, made with a variety of different ingredients. Um, konjac and sweet potato, and you know, there's so many different ways to go, but I think finding one that's a little bit more neutral and well balanced generally plays a lot better. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, the benefit of that, of course, as well, on top of moving away from traditional wheat pasta. Um, is that it's also appropriate for those that are doing gluten-free. So this is going to be more of our plant-forward dish. And by plant-forward, I'm going to define it in my mind as being mostly vegetarian, plant-based items with some a couple of different ingredients that are animal-derived, but it's using them in much smaller quantity. So we're still being very conscientious about the quantity of meat and, and animal proteins that we're using, um, but enough that we think that it balances out the dish um, and it just has this really nice flavor to it. So I'm just overheating my olive oil here. So we're just going to take that off the heat for a second. <laughs> um, <laughs> and if my alarm goes off in this apartment, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't think we've ever had that before with you. No. During a different yeah. presentation, I definitely had that happen. Okay. Oh, an Instagram Live. That nice. Was, yeah. I'm sure nice. a, lot, a lot like a Blair Witch Project thing where it's like all you could see was me scrambling with my, my face in front of it. Um, so again, what I've also thrown in here with the uh, different grain uh, and vegetable pasta is going back old school, spiralized zucchini. You can really add whatever. You know, it's funny. I was actually going to mention that. I've started to see that come back again. I, you know what? I'm seeing it. But again, I think people are trying to be a little bit more balanced with what their intake yeah. is. And I think a lot of it could be either, you know, just having that straight up. But then you need like heavy tomato sauce and something that really covers it. I feel because yeah. you still want to feel like pasta, but I like this whole idea of doing a little bit real or a little bit more traditional and then a little bit of a veggie base. And that really is the name of this dish. So what I'm doing here in my super hot pan is I'm going to add some garlic. I'll try not to singe it. So saute off some of our garlic. I'm going to add a little bit of Dijon mustard in here. Nice. Um, I just feel like it gives it that nice kind of peakiness, especially because this is going to be a cream-based pasta. So it's a really nice flavor to come through. And I'm going to add some sun-dried tomatoes that are chopped up and a little bit of the oil that came from a jar. So yes, I did get them in oil as opposed to just dried and then reheating them. <laughs> So we're sauteing that around already. I'm getting an amazing aroma between the garlic and the sun-dried tomatoes, and that Dijon is just so rich and complex with it. Um, so what I'm going to use here to deglaze my pan is, you guessed it, some of our prepared, diluted, not overly used uh, vegetable liquid concentrated base. So I'm going to add some of that in there. And the other thing too that's nice about this, having this vegetable base in here, is with the pasta that I had previously cooked off and tossed in some oil, mm -hmm. um, I did cook it slightly under al dente because I love to finish my pastas in the sauce. I just feel like it gives it that opportunity to really absorb a lot of that flavor um, as opposed to just tossing it last minute. And then of course our spiralized zucchini is raw, so this will give it a nice opportunity to just quickly get some heat to it um, so that it has a tiny bit of crunch, but it's not straight up raw when you're getting it in your pasta. I did that with rice this past weekend. With adding it to no, more like El, I, El, El Dante rice. That's right under. <laughs> did you cook it at all? <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it was Nick. It's still crunchy, Dad. <laughs> there's El Dante, and then there's I can't eat this. 
<laughs> so um, what I've already done is I've prepared some of the Nor Culinary Cream, which I talked about. So this is a cow dairy based product. It is gluten free. It is dry in this bag and you just add water. You can mix it cold, which is what I've done here. Um, as long as it does heat up at some point in the dish, you can use this cold. So whether you're doing a white sauce pizza base, you can keep this in the cold well cold, and then once the pizza goes through the oven, then we're feeling good about that kill step. Um, it's just amazing. It's about a third the cost of real dairy cream. So again, when we're thinking about being efficient, when we're thinking about lower cost, there's some places where we can use an item like this or use it as some sort of thickener. Um, and it really does cut out a lot of steps and a lot of different ingredients. So this is what we're gonna add in here to our lovely little mixture. And I'm gonna let that kind of come to a simmer and then I'm gonna toss this in to let it continue with its cooking process. Um, so the other things here, so we already have some of the dairy from this, so that's where we've done a little bit of that traditional uh, moving away from just plant-based. Um, the other thing that we're gonna add here is chicken crackling or chicken skin. What? So, right, what? So just the garnish, this is gonna be our garnish. It has such an amazing fatty flavor to it. Of course it does. Everybody knows that experience of like the holiday dinner and you take the bird out of the oven and everyone's over there immediately uh. at pieces as it's getting carved. Jay, tell me you haven't done that before. Of course. We've all, we've all done it. We've Don't even it. start. The, we've all done it. the other thing too is, you know, obviously you've got the other chicken meat for some other dishes that you might have. So this is just a great way. And it also does have a little bit of that, like, Ooh, that's interesting kind of moment to it. <laughs> um, and it does add texture as well. So super easy, as you would imagine, it's the skins on a wire rack, some salt, bake it off, takes like 20 minutes not even and you're good to go and add a little bit of parmesan cheese on top and i've messed around with the idea of doing a breadcrumb top pasta but i've done some toasted quinoa here so again if quinoa is already something on your menu and i'm still keeping it gluten free and it's got that really nice texture to it and it's something that's just a little bit more interesting so our sauce is coming to a simmer here this is way too much pasta for one portion <laughs> I'll have to share with a friend. So we will give that a little stir so that it gets mixed up in our sauce and we'll let it come back to a simmer for a minute. Heat it through, really get the absorption of some of that sauce. Um, I'm going to do some seasoning as well. I won't use that. That's actually the Mulvin salt. Finishing salt, Jay, what was I thinking? <laughs> well, we all, we all, we always have salt under our cupboard. I think I've got like four different types of salt. Nice. I know that the Malden salt used to be sold in these like wee little tins. And anybody that sees this, please post a comment and let me know where I can get them because I can't find them anymore. <laughs> and I thought, how lovely would it be to just bring your Malden salt with you wherever you go? <laughs> wherever you go. Yeah. And by the way, yes, I'm that customer. Oh, excuse me. Do you have your finishing salt? That I, I was going to say, you don't carry dressing in your purse. <laughs> oh, that's at McDonald's. No. Is that okay? Okay. <laughs> nice. Um, all right. So we're just kind of coming back to a simmer here. It looks nice and fresh. And I'm going to need a bowl to plate this. I'm going to do a little bit more. We're going to add some lemon juice because I didn't want that. That was for the Aoli. Oh. So many good smells and just a few ingredients. And you always got to love pasta. Just, I mean, wheat based pasta or other, but just for the food cost part of it. And people are still ordering it, right? Because people are at a home and that's where they want to splurge. Why not, eh? Looks great, Jay. Things just, are happening. Just go for it. Just go for it. Just go for it. So I could have uh, made my color, like I could have added a little bit more of the culinary cream, but I wanted a really nice light sauce to this. I'm going to add a little bit of our parm that's already shredded through the magic of television. 
All right, we're going to turn off the heat. And we are going to, and of course, like the same sort of sauce, like with the uh, deglazed with the stock and the Dijon, could work for so many things beyond pasta. But <clears throat> this is what I wanted today. So this is what we're having. So it's just, that's what you're having. Um, but of course, it would be lovely with a lot of different proteins. Maybe the rest of the chicken that you didn't cook that you used the skins for. So I'm going to do my quinoa breadcrumbs and some more parm. And then I'm going to kind of break up some of these pieces of the chicken skin. Oh, yes. So many good things are happening. And when you think about it, you're still going to get that very satiating feeling like you have meat in the dish, but with very little. Nice. Right? So that's it. That is our plant-based dishes for today. I just wanted to show those couple of items. So again, we've just had a few different um, easy products too that have multi-purpose back of house. So a concentrated base can be used as a stock or otherwise your bechamel sauce replacement, and of course our Hellman's vegan mayo. Um, for any other plant-based ideas, of course, you can either go to cisco.ca or you can go to unileverfoodsolutions.ca. And we always have our NOR Future 50, which are the identified 50 uh, grain, vegetable, fruit ingredients that are the most sustainable um, for uh, a more you know, wholesome diet, but as well as sustainability for our environment. And it's a really great, a really great study that we had done. So there's a really, a lot of great info there that you can find at UnileverFoodSolutions.ca. Pelevating? Pelevating. 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 Did we pelevate that enough? I'm getting people texting me. It's spelled wrong. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No, no, it's always on purpose. That is the chef mindset. If you burn it, it's charred. If it's television, yes. that's what you meant for it to be. That's what it is. It's it's plant based. Looking at a new way of looking at things. So yeah, that's what we do. Thank you so much, Jay, for having me on here. And dare dare I also talk about Fair Kitchens really quickly? Uh, going to fairkitchens.com, which of course Cisco Canada is a great partner of, and it was started by Unilever. So please go check it out. Um, it's all tools and resources for a happier and healthier back of house. Actually, it works for front of house too. Uh, so that we can have a thriving restaurant industry. And just thank you so much for your time and for uh, watching with us. Now I wish I had somebody here to eat with, Jay. Get over here. I'll be here. there in a second. I'll, I'll, be, there plate. In a second. I'll be there in a second. Now, now, I just want to talk about Fair Kitchens really quick before you go. Yeah. Is, is there, do you see more and more people reaching out? Because it just seems a lot of people are under a lot of stress right now in our industry. Absolutely. I What I see is, a lot more people reaching out to kind of be connected with others. And that's one of the big initiatives that we're working on right now is connecting people to the right people. Um, there's been a lot of mental health, of course, that we need to talk about has always been within the industry, but especially as we've been coming out of the pandemic. Um, and there's some really fantastic resources. Um, and we continue to partner with those individuals like Cisco that can really help us get that word out there so that we're getting to the people that need the help the most. So it's, yeah, really, really fortunate to be able to promote this and be a part of it. You know, and I guess the best thing is, is just connects everyone together. And I think that's so important. It's tough out there right now. It's really tough for a lot, on a lot of yeah. people. Absolutely. And that's why we're just hoping that we can help a little bit. Right? Whatever we can do. Prevailing, plant-based, pelevating, plant-based, you're doing everything. <laughs> Thank awesome. you so much, Jay, for having us. No problem. Thanks again. And to everyone else, we'll be back tomorrow. And we'll make sure that we spell the Instagram post so I don't get all these texts. Right? Thank you very much, everyone. Um, the dyslexic guy in me hit the wrong button. Anyways, uh, so there. Uh, we're back again tomorrow, of course, Corner. We're going to be doing, it's so exciting, but pan, 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 I was saying panda earlier, pan, 
layers, those pan like inserts that you don't get the plastic pan layers, liners. Holy cow! I hope everyone else is finding oh, finding this as enjoyable as I do. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm back. <laughs> yes, we're going to do pan liners tomorrow. Holy and gloves. Yeah. More Rachel gloves. Lina. Yeah. <laughs> I just carried the misspell that social asset. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Jeff. Everyone else have a great day. We'll see everyone later.